this for our Mongolian lifter, Enerel Gombasurin. It's too much for her. I mean, massive opening attempt for her. We mentioned already that her previous best prior to this was just 84 kilos, so <laughs> that's quite a big opener. So in terms of the age groups, Vanessa Sano was born in 2003. Is she the, she's the youngest, but she's not going to be looking at getting any sort of junior world records, I wouldn't have thought. The junior world records, if you're, if you're interested, Snatch is 112 kilos from Kate Vibert. She did that in Pattaya, Thailand, 2019. Sarah Ahmed from Egypt from 2018 holds a clean and jerk and total record, 141 and 252. And then the youth records, 103 by uh, Zarina Gusolova from Russia. That was in 2021. Uh, and then the clean and jerk, 130 kilos and the total, 230 kilos by Joy Ogbonne from Nigeria, also from 2021. So we'll see Enerol Gombasura now following herself. So we have a comment saying Shizu Yong made 170 kilo snatch in 2021. Why doesn't it count as a record? It wasn't at an IWF sanctioned meet. Again, that attempt, just very soft in the elbows, soft lockout, didn't look particularly close. So she's going to follow herself one final time. It's not unlike the Mongolians to be quite aggressive. Uh, but yes, you often see that uh, national records can uh, be a little bit higher than world records occasionally. It used to be the case with Russia. They had plenty of... Uh, national records that were far in excess of world records you know there's no testing for example potentially at these national competitions there might be uh, in chinese nationals i'm not sure but i know that at russian nationals there was no testing um and so the the shape that these athletes turned up in back in the day i'm thinking about some of the records back when klokov was competing you know 2002 up to 2011 Certainly, they had some ridiculous records in that 105 kilo category. You know, I, I think even in fact, Pokov's best total at a national competition was 442 and a half kilos, I believe, which was so far in excess of the world record. If he'd have done that in a national, sorry, an international competition, he'd have had something like a top 30 Sinclair of all time. But as it stands, he's he's nowhere near that. Yeah, good point from Max. Uh, in the 85 kilo category, Tian Tao made 221 kilos. He did. The world record was 220 from Rastami from the uh, Fisher Cup. Yeah, so when the Chinese competition, uh, national championships within China is just a national competition, not an international competition. And so you're unable to set any international record if you're competing there. Just like at the British Championships, nobody could set a world record. They could lift one, but it wouldn't count. Okay, final attempt. This is do or die for Enero. She definitely pulled it faster, but again, just way too aggressive with that opening attempt. So she's out with the running. Three attempts, three misses at 90 kilos. We're going to move over now to Minhee Mun, who's also making a very aggressive attempt here. Her best snatch recently is more around the 95 range. She hasn't lifted at this sort of weight in a while. She did make 106 back in 2018, though. So it's certainly not like she can't do this. She placed third at the Asian Games in 2018. Interestingly, she competed at the Australian Open in 2020 to the silver. Huge pull. 
Yeah, very nice left. Very confident opener. Clearly, she's in decent shape. I mean, the Koreans, you have to expect, are going to be turning up in not far off the best shape of their lives, we, we hope. We've seen a few a few great lifts um, from the, the Koreans here and a few not so great performances. Yesterday, Juhyo back from the men's 73s, clean and jerked very well. But then uh, his teammate, Hansel Young, not so well. So it's up and down with the team right now. What's my opinion on Kuo's era coming to an end? Kuo Sung Chun. Yeah, I think it's very possible that we're seeing Kuo's age. Well, not necessarily age. She's I think she's 29, but her training age catching up to her. There used to be a, a period of time where she was just consistently snatching in the mid to high sort of 100s and then hitting a, a 136 clean jerk for the win like she needed yesterday would have been a almost a guaranteed win for her. But it's been a long time now. We've seen a miss uh, not win at two competitions in a row, which I think is the longest non-gold medal streak of her career. There we go. That's Fam's opener. 96 kilos. I think the added body weight has definitely helped her out. Looks very strong. I'm sure she'll get over 100 today. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I think Quo needs to put in a massive performance at some point just to remind the Chinese that they shouldn't send an athlete in that category because right now, uh, you know, the Chinese have to decide which three athletes they send. They're obviously going to send Li Wen Wen and then the contention comes between the 49s, which I think is pretty safe for them. So I think they'll send a 49, a super, and then they have to decide do we send a... 59 to compete against Kuo Sung Chun, do we send a 71 to compete against Loredana, or do we send an 81 to compete against someone like Solfred Kwanda? And right now, it almost looks as though, but it's, it's hard to know which is the easiest category. It's it's hard to know, because Loredana Toma also didn't look particularly good at the European Championships. Kuo Sung Chun not looking so great here. In the 81s, I mean, Solfred's looking amazing with that 272. Obviously, she weighed 73.9, but I think Quo might not be doing enough to convince Team China to, to avoid the category. So we could be seeing an end to a, a career. I mean, five world championships. Wow. Very solid opener there at 98 kilos. So that's uh, Zhang Tian Tian. Uh, yeah, we might be seeing the end of, of Quo's career. I mean, I imagine she'll go to Paris, of course, because she'll qualify, but I would not be surprised if she then retired. 98 kilo opener now for Miko Ishii from Japan. Currently ranked number 17 in the world in the category. Very nice opening attempt. Such a vertical torso in the catch. Incredible depth. She's going to have to put in a massive showing if she wants to get herself up into the top 10. She's going to need another you know, good 10 kilos on her total from that performance in Colombia. So a question about Loredana from Max. What is happening with Loredana Toma? Apparently she's retiring. There was a sense that that might be what's happening. You know, when we comp when we were doing the commentary at the European Championships, after her last lift, uh, she took off her belt and wrist straps and put them on the platform. Historically, when you leave things on the platform, it means that you're retiring. It's happened with the shoes plenty of times throughout weightlifting history. Dimas, of course, did it in 2004 as a symbol of retiring. Uh, she was then in tears on the podium. Let's watch this opener. 98. That's a great opening attempt. I think this battle 
between the two athletes in the Philippines is going to be a lot of fun. We still haven't seen Sano come out yet. She's put in 100 for her opening attempt. Laoji Fang still at 110. Uh, but Laura Dana was, was crying on the podium. Um, it seemed like something was very off. It was very strange. Uh, but then in an interview she gave once she returned back to Romania, she said she wasn't going to retire. And from what we know, it was more of a uh, a national governing dispute a problem from within the Romanian Federation with regards to her coach, I believe, uh, which caused her to be very upset and essentially be making a statement to the uh, National Federation, potentially saying, look, I could retire and then you're going to be in a bad place. So she sort of mimicked what it would be like to retire, but didn't. And uh, yeah, so it would be... It would be um, strange for her to retire at this point but she may well retire after Paris such a nice second attempt there she needs to go over 100 on this third attempt which she will with a pull there's that much speed and being a, being a taller athlete she has a longer distance to travel the bar within which to accelerate the bar so she'd gain more speed more height so another question about why do the chinese have to choose between categories can't they send an athlete per category no uh the ioc the international olympic committee is so angry with weightlifting and all of its doping that they've essentially limited the participation of weightlifting as much as possible that's why we only have five weight categories for the men and five for the women and they've reduced the number of athletes that a country can send from it used to be almost as many as could qualify last time it was four and now it's three whoa nice little duck walk save there and so vanessa sano from the philippines gets underway i think that opener looked despite that little step out looked almost as easy as McCrohan's opener at 98. You know, we had those three misses right at the start, but since then, everyone has made their lefts. Laoji Fan, the only athlete not to open yet, 110 kilos she's put in. Whenever we see an opener like that, you've always got to have in the back of your mind, is she just going to make five kilo jumps and try and go for a world record? No doubt, Loredana Toma is watching, seeing what's happening with Laoji Fan. She may well be on the stream, it's probably uh, mid-morning in Romania. I think it's around 11.30 a.m. So she may well be there watching. Okay, so Tiong Pham. Second attempt now, 100 kilos. Oh, and she fights for it, but she's up. Really great to see from her. She had such a tough time in the snatch in Bogota, missed all of her lifts. But to get back to that 100 kilo mark, which she, she hit the Asian Championships, which she won last year, 100, 117, the easiest win of the competition probably. The competitors were not so strong in that 64 kilo category, but now that she's up in the Olympic category, she's gonna have to be lifting like this. Miku Ishii, second attempt. This will only be the second time in her, her career that she's made a triple figure, triple digit snatch. She made 101 at the World Champs, that was it. Oh, her mobility is just, and her athleticism, her ability to just make those small little micro corrections and just find these millimeters of depth that mere mortals don't have access to is remarkable okay so back to some of these questions i was just talking about the allocation of athletes to these competitions yeah you can only send three so and you can only send one per um category of course so there are going to be plenty of teams you know, another notable team would be someone like the USA, where on the women's side, they'll probably qualify 
an athlete in most categories. You know, five or six women might be in the top ten in the world, but then the top ranked uh, will get the offers. So it's no, it's not good enough, unfortunately, if you're one of these athletes to just get in the top ten to qualify for the Olympics. There we go. I mean, she she is lifting less. I don't know if she's suffered an injury since the World Championships or what, but Tian Tian is still making light work of all of these lifts, almost as though she's just going to go in and take a, an, an easy-ish silver medal, perhaps. But she doesn't need to worry because she's the number two ranked weightlifter in the world in this category. It's, it's actually... Um, who is it? Uh... Liao Ji Fang, who needs to put up the bigger total because she's currently not ranked in the top 10, so she needs to outlift what Zhang Tian Tian did at the World Champs. But yeah, it's not good enough for these athletes to uh, just get in the top 10. They have to, well, for some of them, they have to also rank higher than other athletes in their countries who are in other top 10s. Oh, you wouldn't have known it based on the opener, but, you know, and to be fair, the bar had enough speed there. We've not got the best angle to see trajectory, but it looked like it was okay. Obviously, it was left out in front, but we don't know how severely. So that's our first miss in a while. That's Chris McCrohan. It was a four kilo jump, which is pretty large. So there's talk now about which Chinese male lifters will be sent. Of course, Liu Zhaozhen will not be sent because he's not even allowed to compete at the moment due to his EPO ban. And he's certainly not in shape to be... It doesn't look like he's planning on competing ever again based on what he's doing at the moment. And then it comes down to the shape that the other athletes get in. I imagine that Li Fabian will be sent in the men's 61s unless Chen Li Zheng can outlift him. Assuming she's young, returns to shape. Let's watch this 102. Oh, there's a few wobbles in the upper body. What's going to happen here? It's a good lift. Yeah, she gets that. There was a little bit of movement. You know, there are some competitions where the jury might take a little review of that, but potentially not here. Uh, so yeah, I, I imagine that if she's young, returns to full shape, he'll he'll be fine because even though he has a little bit of challenge now in the clean and jerks with Rahma O and Abdullah and even athletes you know like Rizki Jin and Sia if he was to be the uh, athlete from Indonesia who went she's the youngest just too far ahead in the snatch and then they'll have to take an 89 because there's no way they'll be taking a 102 or a super so out of the 89s will it be Tian will it be uh, Li Dayan or will it be Liu Huan Hua we actually have a video on YouTube coming out probably later today about this battle, so stay tuned for that. Oh my word. I'd love to see her make that at some point. That was an incredible attempt. Great depth. But if they're all in shape, I mean, historically, it would be Tian out of those three. Uh, as an 85 kilo lifter, he was so dominant. You know, he was snatching around the 178 mark, clean and jerking competition 218. That's a, a total which, if you converted that into performance at 89, would be way too dominant for anyone else in China. But his numbers are probably not going to be quite of that level. Uh, I mean, I could see him going for world records in the clean and jerk, but Li Dayin is a stronger snatcher. He's a world record holder in the snatch. Tian Tao, world record holder in the clean and jerk. So watching those two go up or down a category and meet in the middle should provide with some some fun. And then, yes, I saw somebody mention about the rumor of Liu Hua setting a unofficial world record at a national competition. I also heard that rumor. So I believe that Liu Hua did hit 221 kilos. Wow, what a save. Lil Rock back onto the heels. 
103, and I think that's a one kilo personal best for Fam. No, it's one kilo under her personal best actually from the Southeast Asian Games. But coming back to full health, that's a, a great place to be. Okay, Crystal McCrohan now. She missed her second attempt at 102. Made another two kilo jump up to 104. It's risky business. Oh, and the pull was, was certainly looked pretty strong. Missed it behind. I guess if you're going to miss, missing behind sort of suggests that maybe at one point in time the barbell was directly above where it needed to be. That could well have been on bent arms at that point, of course. It didn't look like it was there, though. It looked like it locked out the whole way as she lost it behind. So two attempts remain for Vanessa Sano. She'll be out next. And one attempt for Tian Tian Zheng. And then we have three attempts for Lao Chi Fang. So Sano will just be in such a dominant position over her teammate McCrohan if she makes this she'll have a 7 kilo lead and she really wants this because right now McCrohan is the oh that's a great pull she doesn't have to take any steps to save that one McCrohan is currently the athlete from the Philippines who's in the Olympic slot from her performance at the World Championships but it doesn't look like she's going to have it for long because Sano is definitely lifting at a level that McCrohan hasn't done recently. And with one attempt remaining, she could definitely go for 107 or 108. She's already guaranteed herself a medal in the snatch. Okay, 105, final attempt for Tian Tian. Oh, yeah, she's not in her best shape. So Wong KN in the chat says that her, his opinion for the women for Team China is that they will guarantee to send Li Wen Wen, probably send Zhang Hui Hua, and then it's their third place that's being fought over, and I would agree with that. And the battle lies between the 59s, 71s, and 81s as to which athlete gets that third place spot. But China will probably qualify two athletes in every category. Obviously only one will get offered a place, but in the 49s, 59s, 71s, and 81s, they'll qualify two, and then only one in the supers, but that's all they need there. A 107 final attempt here for Sano. Wow, it's a three kilo personal best. Unbelievable. What a way to to move back ahead. Or well, hopefully if she gets some clean checks, she could move back ahead of McCrohan. McCrohan snatched one of four at Worlds. And so 104, 128, 232 is the total that Sano needs to beat. That 107 is going to come in handy. So three attempts remain and they all remain for Lao Gui Fang. World record is 119 kilos from Laura Dana Toma. So she'd have to take some pretty hefty five kilo jumps here if she wants to take a shot at that. I imagine that really Lao Gui Fang would just be looking to ensure that she moves ahead of Tian Tian 
in the rankings, the world rankings. She may even be looking to get into that number one spot. Dislodge Loredana and put in a, a display for the Chinese Federation that she should be the third athlete selected for Paris. Yeah, that looks very nice. <laughs> very comfortable. Nice gold belt on it. So Liao Guifang, two more attempts. Obviously, she's improved a lot over the last few years. Only competed, well, this is a fifth international, in 2017 at the Asian Youth Champs, 92-105. Uh, only international win so far was the Junior World Championships in 2019. Then she took a three-year break, came back with that 110-140 performance at the World Champs, which only placed fourth, which is just insane. And now here she is looking to be in significantly better shape than that. I mean, to be opening up with the numbers that you made at the World Championships is pretty crazy. And no doubt the other top one, though, uh, uh, 78 ones in the world will be keeping the eye on this performance right now. Now I think it's like Loredana Toma, but also you can't forget Angie de Homes from Ecuador, Kate Vibert from the USA. I mean, even within the USA, you've, you've got other 71 kilo lifters, of course. Three of them really battling it out at 71 within the USA. Uh, Mary Sanchez from Colombia. Mary Fegway from France, Julia Miserandino. You know, there's a lot of athletes who will be keeping an eye on on what's going on here. This is 115, which is enormous, and it's potentially going to set itself up for a world record attempt. All comes down to this. Oh, can she hold on? Unbelievable. It almost looked for well a few seconds like she was going to lose that behind. She really had to work hard to fight to pull that bar back over her. So surely, surely she'll go for a world record attempt here. She's got such a dominant lead. Or is she going to play this, the, you know, the maybe smarter game of just putting in a total that is too untouchable? I mean... You have to imagine, if you're Laura Dana and you're watching this, and you're thinking, oh no, so there's somebody who can snatch with me, then she's sort of screwed because Laura Dana can't get over 140. You know, I, I filmed her making a 141 in training, but I've never seen her make, well, she hasn't ever made 140 plus in competition. Yeah, at the World Championships, Loredana snatched 119, cleaned up 137. So if we see Lao Ju Fang hitting 118 or 120, and then we know that she can get over 140, it, yeah, that potentially might be a total that is basically untouchable for for Toma. I mean, if, if anyone totals 260, that's probably gold. That's probably the gold uh, in Paris. A 260 total is done. And uh, Lao Ji Fang, it's possible that she could do that. So, there we go. 120 world record attempt is being asked for. So we've seen a few world record attempts. Have we seen a few or have we seen just one? We have seen a world record attempt for sure. It was also at 120 kilos, uh, but it was in the cleaner jerk. It was in the women's 49 kilo session. That was on the first day of competition. That was caused by Zhang Huihua, the uh, 
the once world record holder in the clean and jerk and total. She seems like a pretty strong Olympic contender for Team China. So another world record attempt now at 120 kilos. Very exciting. That 115, I mean, I think she just about might have the pull for this. It's about whether she ends up losing it behind. Can she just keep that bar path straight enough? Here we go. It would just be so wonderful to see a new world record, and it would be so exciting to you know, have a proper challenger in the snatch for Laura Darnatoma to compete with, to roll her back up to these bigger numbers. This is massive. Oh my <laughs> word. And I tell you what, I think she made that look a little bit nicer than Laura Dana made 119. A new world record in the snatch. That is just simply unbelievable. Now Gui Fang, 10 kilo personal best for her internationally. 120 kilos. I mean, what a... What a benchmark! What a you know that what a cutoff to separate her from everybody else. Two reds on the bar, and did she even seem in any way to acknowledge that lift? I don't think she did. She just <laughs> made it and walked straight off. Four athletes go three for three there. That is absolutely stunning stuff. What an amazing lift! So let's take a look at the. Uh, had the scoreboard very quickly. So the fourth place right now in the snatches. I'd have to work this out. I think it's Min Hee Moon from Korea, 102. Bronze to uh, Ti Hong Pham from Vietnam, 103. In fact, no, fourth is going to be Zheng Tian Tian with 102 because she hit that before Min Hee Mun did. Uh, bronze to Ti Hong Pham from Vietnam. Silver, Vanessa Sano, three kilo personal best at 107. And then the gold medal just so far out in the lead. Unbelievable snatching, 120 kilos for Lao Ji Fang, three for three. And uh, that has really disrupted this category. Now, we'd, we've been talking about how on the women's side in China, the difficulty is going to be deciding who is the third athlete to send. It might actually be that Lao Ji Fang becomes the obvious second athlete to send behind Li Wen Wen. And that actually it's more like, do we send a 49 versus somebody else? And I think probably they will send the 49. But Gui Fang is definitely showing why she should be sent. If she can even just hit this opener of 140, She's probably going to be an untouchable weightlifter for anyone else in the world in this category. 260s is, is likely to do it. Yeah, that was such a... Uh casual world record i'm just looking at some of these comments it was probably the most casual looking world record normally the athlete at least shows some level of uh you know state arousal before they make the lift and then some sort of display of celebration afterwards but i think she just walked on very stoically you know she can't control the environment. 120 is what she has to lift she hit it so amazing stuff and also just a great category so far uh, very few misses, really. You know, we saw the three misses in the in the snatch from the Mongolian and Nerel. But other than that, to only see four miss lifts out of 21 attempts is pretty insane. So the world record total, yeah, that's a good point. We should keep an eye on that, is 267 kilos, which is pretty massive. Um, that was Zhang Wang Li. So she would need 147, uh, sorry, 148 kilos to, to move ahead of that.
So a question, Seb, what's your personal favorite technical model on display this Asian Championships? Uh, I think, I mean, there have been a lot of amazing technicians so far. The, the standout in terms of how she moves, even though she didn't win, and she didn't make all of her lifts, but probably Pei Jin Yi from China. She competed at 64 at Worlds and then 59 here. Uh, did she take silver yesterday or, or bronze in the end? I think it was silver. Uh, but the way she moves, you know, she's only 17 years of age and she is just technically so precise. Clearly nowhere near as strong physically as the two other athletes who she was really pushing up against in that session, Lo Shi Fang and Kuo Sung Chun. But just the way that Pei Jin Yi moves, I think she's probably uh, going to be a bit of a superstar one day. Give her a few more years of just general strength training. Uh, get her squat and pulls up by 20 kilos or so and, and it will be insane. So if we look at the previous most dominant weightlifter in this category, the number one weightlifter in the world, it was, of course, Deng Wei from China, who retired in, uh, well, I guess technically her last competition was 2019. I don't think her retirement came until 2021. She was obviously going for the Olympics and then she got injured and had to withdraw from the 2020 Asian champs in 2021. Uh, a few months prior to the, the Olympics, then she never came back from that. But her best snatch ever, I believe, was 117 kilos. But she did that as a 64. Let's not forget. She never competed at, at 71. But as a 64, she snatched 117. And then she was clean and jerking. Uh, 147 kilos was her best. Again, I think she did that. Yeah, she did that in Rio at the Olympics. Uh, a 262 kilo total was her world record in that 63 kilo category back then. And then as a 64 kilo lifter, I believe her world record total was 261 kilos from Thailand, 116, 145 there. So obviously we're now up a category here at, at 71. But it's, it's certainly possible that we see uh, Lao Gui Fang start to really push those sorts of, n I mean, she's already exceeded the snatch, but, you know, really start showing a Sinclair that is up there with, with the rest. So, another question. Do I think that Deng Wei is top three female lifters? Presumably that means ever. Um, I think that's very possible. I mean, she, in terms of her Sinclair, no. She's uh, number 11. Uh, her best Sinclair was um, from that performance in, in Rio, the 115, 147. 345 Sinclair. Number one Sinclair was Tatiana Kasharina. Uh, number three was actually Svetlana Podobadova, um, Podobadova, sorry, from Kazakhstan. I mean, but in terms of just the ability to continually win over and over again, I think there's a, a case that you can make for Deng Wei being the best weightlifter. Um, I, I mean, there are athletes who have put in individual performances more impressive you know, on, on paper, you know, Kang Yue from China has, has done it at 75, you know, that 131, 160 that she did, moves her ahead. Uh, King and Ju, even Bianca Costova, you know, in Houston, her 112, 140, she may well have been popped for that, to be fair. But um, the highest ranked performance from a Chinese female weightlifter ever, interestingly, 
uh, Mei and Jean from uh, it was Athens, but it was Athens ninety nine, not not Athens two thousand four. She was a fifty three, and she went one of five, one thirty two point five. That's the fifth highest Sinclair ever on the women's side. So a few odd uh, stats for you. So surely we're going to be underway again soon. So it looks like 10 seconds. I have an internal clock, I think, with these things. Having done so much commentary where I get a little uh, jolt inside me that says weightlifting's about to start. I looked over and it was 10 seconds on the clock. So, yeah, we're back now. So the bar has been dropped in weight, which you know is a sign of a good snatch session. When you start up with the cleaner jerks at a lighter weight than we just saw. And you know what? It doesn't even... It's nothing against um, what we're seeing with the open and cleaner jerk attempt. I mean, Anerel is, is a very good weightlifter. You know, 115 as a 71 is a strong lift, but it just goes to show how crazily strong Lao Gui Fang is. And finally, on the board, three misses in the snatch, but then she goes ahead and hits that. It's huge. So at 118 kilos, Ti Hong Pham, She'll be out next, and they'll probably go back and forth between them, along with McCrohan and Miku Ishii, just to break up all of their attempts. But Tian Tian with 128, it's a pretty heavy opener. Min Hee Mun, 125. I mean, Vanessa Sano is also looking strong at 128, but that 140 from Lao Gui Fang is just so threatening. So here comes Pham. She's got a great lockout in the jerk. It's really impressive. Not the strongest legs. I mean, she'll get up with it, but it, it tends to be the, the legs that limit her in the cleaner jerk. Although that looked pretty good. And then a crazy lockout. That's 221 kilos for her. She's not yet in the top 10 because she, well, she hasn't competed at 71 yet. Although you can rank in as a 71 for the Olympics if you've only been at 64. But you'll do better, obviously, if you if you gain that weight. But she bombed out, so she definitely wants to get up to that 130 range. If she does that, she'll, she'll be well into that top 10 at this point. The athletes in the top 10 who need to be worried really are... Numbers 10, 9, 8, and 7. Then there's, there's a massive jump from 7 up to 6. So at number 7 is Julia Miserandino with 233. But then the 6th ranked, 8 kilos ahead of her, is Marie Fegwe. So basically Julia Miserandino, Christelle McCrohan, Laura Peneda, and uh, Yanyuska Mirabal, those are the athletes who are in the danger spots right now. We have a year of qualification still ahead of us before the Olympic Games. So those are going to be the athletes who are targeted. 233 kilos will be targeted. So 234, a lot of athletes are going to be wanting to start pushing towards. Okay, and we're up at the weight that was snatched just 13 minutes ago. 120 kilos. Opening attempt for Miku Ishii. Tough stand. Oh dear. It's a bad place to be. This is a really bad place to be. Missing a lift like that. You know, the next attempt is 
Crystal McCrohan at 120, but she could just bump up to 121 here. Steal the clock of Miku Ishii. You know, she can steal the clock and just really scupper um, everything that happens for Miku Ishii. Although, actually, no, Enero has got 120 in as well, so they both have to do it. She might be okay. We'll see what happens. Will McCrohan bump up? No, she'll come out for this. Oh, just crashed on her. And again, this is just classic of athletes pushing to get in the top 10. But McCrohan is in the top 10, and, she, and she's not going to be able to beat her total from the World Championship. So she doesn't really need to be going this heavy. She's so far down now after a poor snatch performance that she doesn't need... I mean, a 120 is not going to do anything for her, really. And now, now with 120 kilos also. Pretty big jump. And also, I believe, a massive personal best for her at this point. Coming into this competition, the most she'd ever clean and jerked was 107 kilos, which she did at the Asian Junior Championships. Huge pull. A great fight to get up with it. Not a great bounce in the catch, but she is up. I think she really gets a lot out of the oscillation of the bar, but never really locked out. I think she's going to struggle to make that on her third attempt. So right now, 120 is proving to be the weight that is too much for these athletes. Three misses we've seen now in a row at 120. Okay, Miku Ishii. The clean was very tough for her on her first attempt. This is only a kilo shy of her personal best from Worlds. That's maybe better. Yeah, there we go. And we saw yesterday with her teammate, Masanori Miyamoto, you know, getting called for a press out on his second attempt, I think, at 190, then bumps to 191 and made it. Very impressive lift. And she's also got a great lockout win. When she times that jerk nicely. Okay, 120 again now for Crystal McCrohan. One thirty three she made at the Southeast Asian Games last year, so this is way below her best. She's just clearly not in good shape today. She's up. Much better. And she makes the jerk. Again, it didn't actually look like the most comfortable jerk. It wasn't the strongest lift, but um, it's enough to get a total. So that's good. So, Daniel Tan asks, is there a public leaderboard for Paris 2024? There is, and uh, I can't post a link because I don't think YouTube allows you to put a link in the chat. But if you head to iwf.sport, I think that's the best way to get it. You can sort of find it through there. The full thing is iwf.sport forward slash qualif 2024 slash p 2024 underscore qualification forward slash which is a very complicated URL um, but 
it is all there. It's on the IWF.sport website, so you can find it. You can then head on to Olympic qualification rank, select between men and women, and then you can take a proper look at, at these rankings because it is really interesting to see uh, how they're all doing. Although sometimes the website does just randomly go down, but right now it's working. So what do you do when you miss 120? You add two kilos and try again. Yeah, those two kilos definitely added something. But she's up with it. And I think she's going to make it as well. Unbelievable lift there. Third attempt for Enel Gombasuran. Great way to come back. She had such a tough day in the snatch with three misses in a row. But that's a massive 15 kilo personal best in the clean and jerk for her. Of course, she won't walk away with the total. But she walks away with a big clean and jerk, which is uh, a strong way to come back from, from her poor start. 123 will be the next weight loaded. Second attempt for... Uh, Ti Hong Pham. Four athletes still yet to open. Tian Tian Zhang, Min He Mun, uh, Lao Gui Fang, and Vanessa Sano. Now, this is actually a, a big lift for Fam. It equals, so it's three kilos shy of her personal best. But the added weight gain has definitely made a difference in her leg strength. She's standing these cleans up. Can she hold on to the jerk? Yeah. Wobbly. It might not be as precise as some of the other jerks that we're going to see from you know, the Chinese who drill those foot positions so well. But Fam does have a lot of power there in the drive. So Min Hee Mun, who snatched so well, is probably going to be looking to get up into the Olympic rankings at this competition with a 102 snatch. Something in the high 120s would, would probably get her in, and then if she can push into the low 130s, she's going to feel a lot safer there. This is 124 kilos for her opening attempt. Years ago, five years ago, she made 130 kilos, weighing 75. But recently, 125 has been her best. So this is massive, and it and it shows. And it just keeps happening to the South Koreans. You know, the pressure of lifting in front of a home crowd. I don't know, but they're they're opening very heavy. So the qualifying period started at the World Championships in Bogota and it runs until the World Cup in 2024. So it's right around 18 months. So Minhi Mun is going to have to follow herself here. Hopefully that attempt... If you're going to miss a clean and then have to come back out and feel as unfatigued as possible, that's probably the way to do it, by not even having to stand it up. But also, missing a clean so early on in the lift <laughs> doesn't suggest uh, well, doesn't suggest you're necessarily going to make it. But we did actually see this yesterday with one of the Koreans, missing the clean by not even getting up with it uh, and then coming back and making it. So Min Hee Moon may well be able to make this. Okay, so here she comes.
Yeah, that's much better. And you've spoken about this a lot of this competition, but it, it keeps happening. Is that the South Koreans just can't hold a jerk overhead. I mean, of course, some of them can and some of them do. We've seen a few made lifts, but just over and over again, it's just wobbly elbows, it's press outs, it's missed jerks. They go so heavy in training. A lot of the athletes have improved a lot. I mean, they are a great weightlifting nation, but they have a bit of an issue with making lifts in the clean jerk. So it looks like Min Hee Mun is not going to get into the top 10 in the world for the Olympics. I thought after that snatch, if she could just clean and jerk something heavy, hence a heavy opener, she might be able to get it. But she would still need to add on another few kilos to make it. So that's not happening today. So again, she's going to have to follow herself here. This is not easy, and it's definitely slowing down the flow of the competition for these other athletes who are probably timing things, not seeming to see quite so many misses. We have Tian Tian, who's dropped down now to 125 for her opener. Miku Ishii also wants 125, as does Christelle McCrohan. Vanessa Sano still not out yet. She's been in 128 for her opening attempt. Okay, Min Human needs this for a total. That's the best clean of all three. If she's ever going to jerk it, now is the time. But yeah, even if she had held that, that was right at the start. That was a press out on the left elbow, and the sort of the the rebounds from that caused then wobbles in both elbows, and then those wobbles just became too big. So unfortunately, that's another South Korean athlete to not put up a total at this home Asian Championships in Jinju. So, Tian Tian Zhang will come out now, 125 kilos. Of course, she took the silver medal at the World Championships. That was her international debut. She clean and jerked 140 kilos there. She's not in her top shape today. I mean, she was 11 kilos down in the snatch. 102 here. She made 113 at the World Champs. The world record is 152 kilos. That's uh, Zhang Wangli. The world record total is 267. So we'll keep an eye on those numbers as Liao Guifan comes out to see what sort of shape she's in. But here's Tian Tian. 125. Oh dear. Lightheaded, passed out, and she's just flat on the platform. You know, we knew she wasn't in good shape or good health based on how that looked. And, and to be honest, was it a weight cut? Is it is it an illness? Whatever it is, I, you have to wonder whether it's worth risking the athlete's health at this point to carry on with the competition. She has very little to to prove at this point. She's a very strong weightlifter. But I guess just making the national team is so difficult for these Chinese lifters because of the depth within China that withdrawing might feel like the last option you have because you just have to prove that you're getting medals and that you're not a risk. But this seems, I don't know, maybe too much. You know, we saw it happen at the European Championships in the 49s, an athlete passed on her opening attempt, 
came out on the second attempt, passed out again, hit her head and had to get stretched off and was very much unconscious. So we don't want to have to see that again. At least she's off the platform. So third attempt now for Miku Ishii. She missed 120 on her opener, then made it. Now a five kilo jump. Uh, it's very tough, but she just about comes up with it. And the Japanese do have good jerks, and she is able to show off that incredible lockout, straight dip and drive. And she makes the lift. So 226 kilos for Mikuishi. It's not going to be enough to crack the top 10 in the world, but... It's right around that 14th position. E equal total to what Sarah Davies hit at the European Championships. So Crystal McCrohan also will take 125 kilos. Interesting that we had so many athletes miss 120 and then go up in weight and make attempts. That happened to Anerel, it happened to Mikurishi, and it, it might now happen to McCrohan. Sano has dropped down to 126. I guess she's feeling much better about her battle against Tian Tian, having seen Tian miss that, that lift, that 125. It's a strong clean. I uh, just can't knock out. It was definitely a makeable lift for her, but you know she's not in her best shape after she lifted so well at the World Championships. But she may well see her Olympic slot disappear right now in front of her as Vanessa Sano comes out. 107, 126. This one opener would put her at 233 kilos, which is the exact weight that she would need to the kilo to bump McCrohan out of the Olympic rankings. So it's it's pretty savage between these athletes from the Philippines. It's the same with plenty of countries that we've seen with more than one athlete in a category. They are just doing everything they can to move ahead of each other. But also it probably means that this is going to look very heavy because she likely just wants to have three shots at moving into the rankings. That didn't look too heavy though. Not too heavy at all. So 233 kilos and suddenly Sano is at number eight in the world rankings. The same total is Julia Imperio, sorry, Julia Misrandino, but she has two lifts remaining. And one athlete still yet to open. Lao Gui Fang is in, is in good shape, I'm, I'm feeling, you know, which might be the most obvious thing anyone's said so far today, considering a snatch world record, but I'm feeling something big in the clean and jerk too. 140 is the most we've seen from her, so putting that in as her opener is exciting. Okay, so she is going to come back out, Zhang Tian Tian, with 125 again. Or 126, sorry. Is that? Yeah, 126. Oh, it's very tough, but she fights. Brilliant. And she just gets a total. Good but. I, I assume that she's going to be wanting to, to try and get, you know, the bronze. I, I think the the silver seems like it's going to be too far ahead because you'd need to move ahead of Vanessa Sano, who already has a five kilo lead. So 
Tian Tian would need 132, assuming that Sano doesn't even make anything else. So maybe she's just thinking, all right, let's just get that bronze. And to do that while I'm ill, you know, maybe that's enough. But of course, we've got Ti Hong Pham now coming out. This is a new personal best for the reigning Asian champion from the 64s. A new personal best, four kilos up. This puts her at 230 kilos, which, as we know, is the cutoff. This puts her at number 10 in the world. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be enough, realistically. But for a moment, she'll be in that spot. Oh, it's very tough, but she just powers out of it. Wow, I mean, so lopsided in that catch and yet maintains a lockout and that is a, a strong lift there so fam walks away six for six brilliant stuff 103 127 a 230 kilo total six attempts remain three of them belong to the new snatch world record holder Liao Gui Fang uh, you have to hope that seeing that happen has sort of lit a fire back under Toma to continue pushing really hard, particularly in the clean and jerk. Just a three kilo jump here. All she's doing is getting herself into the bronze medal spot. She's not even looking to get ahead of Sano. She just doesn't want to be beaten by Ti Hong Pham. Brilliant. That's just brilliant. And so even on a bad day when she's passing out and she's 10 kilos plus down on her lifts, Tian Tian walks away with 231 kilos, a guaranteed bronze medal at this point. Two attempts now for Vanessa Sano and then three attempts for La Gui Fang. And this lift, this opening attempt for La Gui Fang will make her the number one ranked in the world. And then she has two more to further it, which is devastating for these other athletes. Devastating, to be honest, for Laura Danatoma watching this. It, it, it has to be awful to see Lao Gui Fang in this kind of shape because if Lao Gui Fang makes 140 and then makes, let's say, 145, basically Toma is seeing her Olympic gold medal disappear because it's so unlikely that she'll be able to beat that. That's a massive clean. Great use of oscillation. The jerk was better than her opener. 132 for Vanessa Sano. That puts her at 239 kilos, which is monstrous. It's equal to her personal best in the total from last year. She went 104, 135, and she has one attempt remaining. So 239 kilos. I mean, that's. I would have thought that she is now safe. And what that also did, in fact, no, I was going to say that that bumped T-Fam out of the rankings, but it didn't because she already was in there above her, so she just improves her positioning. So 136 seems like the smart the smart play because it's a one kilo personal best. It also puts her at 243 above Marie Fagway from France. She'd move from seventh to sixth in the rankings if she makes this lift. Okay, I guess a question for everybody watching if they want to... Um, answer is who's going to win at the Olympics if La if Liao Guifang is selected someone's just written I hope Toma doesn't speak English she's going to hate weightlifting house she does speak some English and we know her and she uh, she'll be okay
This is a pretty massive performance that Sano's put in here to beat her teammate. And it might just be that McCrohan is unable to ever outlift this. So right now, the number two ranked lifter in this category is Zhang Tian Tian, who we just saw uh, not in her best of shape today. Oh, it's going to be tough. She's going to have to get multiple bounces. She can't get up with it. But she's in a very solid position, and right now she's put the pressure back onto Christelle McCrohan, her teammate, to, to move back ahead of her. And uh, a great day for Sano. Five for six, 239 kilos, a guaranteed silver. Now, I don't know why Zhang Tian Tian is in third, but I can't see anyone in second. I can only assume that. Was there an athlete from the B group who outlifted everyone and, and the China wasn't aware of that? Surely there wasn't an athlete who lifted over 230 kilos in the B group. But it kind of looks like it. There must have been. We're going to find that out. But here comes the open attempt now for Lao Gui Fang, 140 kilos. With this lift, she becomes the number one number one ranked, 71 in the world. Nice clean. And a very, very strong jerk. Just such a wonderful opener there for Lao Gui Fang. So, interestingly, from the B group, Chen Wenhui, one of my favorite lifters, I didn't know that she'd done this, this must have been a few hours ago, went 6-6, six 101-131, six, a 232 kilo total. Wow, so Chen Wenhui, who injured herself at the Asian Championships and then wasn't really able to lift at the World Championships, puts in a massive 232 kilo total. We haven't been aware of that when we've been looking at these athletes. So that means that when we saw lifters like T Pham hit that 230 kilo total, she thought that was putting her in the top 10, but it wasn't because everyone was one place down because of that massive total from Chen Wenhui. So that means that <laughs> Zheng Tian Tian, I assume, believed that she was in bronze there with that lift because otherwise she had more in her. 232 she needed to beat. She could have done 131. That's crazy. Okay, Lao Gui Fang has 145 kilos written in. The world record total is 267 kilos. So she's gonna go for a world record total now with this 148. That puts her at 268. That's a world record total. So potentially she's going to have the snatch and total world record. And then if she makes it, surely she's then going to go for 153 to go for a clean and jerk and new world record in the total as well. Unbelievable. I mean, we, we are seeing the... I don't necessarily want to say birth because we have seen her compete a few times internationally, but barely. We're kind of seeing the birth, the creation of one of the best weightlifters in the world right now. This would be so dominant. If she makes this, then she's almost more assured to win than even someone like Zhang Huihua in the 49s. This is just insane. This for a total world record. Oh my word. All right, I mean, she's just so dominant. This is staggering stuff. 
I mean, if you didn't know Lao Gri Fang, you definitely do now. And I think the rest of the weightlifting world is going to know more about her. To go from fourth at the World Championships and then do this. I mean, she's 10 kilos up in the snatch. She's 8 kilos up in the clean and jerk. She's, I mean, the fact that she has the world record total means that she is the best 71 ever. And she has one attempt remaining. And I think she's going to go for 153. I mean, can you imagine she makes this and then all of a sudden she has all world records and Lao Gui Fang just owns the 71s and she's the second most sure pick of the Olympic Games. Let's see what she does. I mean, she's not going to take 149. She could withdraw, but it's almost like, why would she? Because she does still need to prove as much as possible to the Chinese Federation that they have to pick her for the Olympics. So if the second attempt looks like that, why not jump another five kilos and go for a world record? She's going to go for it. I can just feel it. Keep an eye on it. She's going to have to put a change soon. And of course, she has to contend with the fact that she doesn't get much rest following herself after all of these lifts. That flashing 149, what's it going to be? Is it going to be 153 kilos? Zhang Wang Li is the only female weightlifter to own world records in more than one category. And uh, right now, she's in a position where she's about to lose that title. And then she'll only hold on to a 76 kilo world record. God, they're really drawing this one out, aren't they? Ah, oh, she withdrew. Okay, well, I mean, we shouldn't be disappointed because we just saw Lao Gui Fang with a world record 120 snatch, a world record total 148, and we now know that she has more. She's going to be hitting in the 150s at some point if she needs it, but we know that she's capable of it. Uh, a new, I guess, new queen of the 71s. It was for a brief period of time, Laura Dana Toma with the number one ranking. But right now, Toma's been bumped down. Her 256 just doesn't really hold up to 268. 12 kilos ahead of everybody else. Lao Gui Fang is the number 171 in the world, and she takes the gold medal here, 120, 148. The silver will go to Vanessa Sano from the Philippines, 107, 132. And then the bronze to an athlete from the B group, it's Chen Wen Hui. I think she went 101, 131, 232 total, which means that Zhang Tian Tian and Team China made an error not looking at those B group totals. And so they're uh, going to walk away with fourth place, unfortunately. I don't think they're going to get any medals. Ooh, no, actually. Th no, they're not going to get any medals at all. Not in the snatch or clean and jerk or total. Uh, so that's it from the women's 71s. We are going to be back tomorrow. Let's just take a look at timings. But tomorrow we have three A sessions. Oh, we also have another session today. Let's not forget. It's the men's 81s in uh, an hour and a half. But tomorrow we have three more sessions, three A sessions. It's the women's 76s, the men's 89s. You do not want to miss that one. And the women's 81s, again, you really don't want to miss that one with Team China looking incredibly strong there as well. So we'll be back for those with some commentary, but don't miss the men's 81s. That starts in an hour and a half.